their age groups are also like varying. But the level of English is similar, and that is a big, big help for the teacher. Another major difference in terms of the classroom activities. The very first activity in most, most coaching centers like this is small talk. Small talk is it's an idiom in English, I'm sure most of you know. So small talk means when you meet a stranger at an airport, for example, at a bus stop, how do you communicate with that person? So that is literally drilled. And many structures they use during this uh, small talk, they may study much later. For example, have you been to any foreign country? Now that particular structure, they are going to study much later. But in the classroom, during the, the early stages, they are taught this small talk, about 100 or 150 uh, questions and answers. And because it is a small group, students come on the stage one by one, and others practice those questions. So within a week's time, Every student has enough confidence to start communication. And once they start communicating in English, their growth, the linguistic growth will be much faster. Another thing is class talk. Now, why do your students need to resort to the local language? Because sometimes they want to ask something, but they don't know how to ask. So if you prepare students for class talk, that means what kind of language they require in the classroom. For example, if I don't know the, know the English word for this as a student, then I will say, what do you call this in English? So that kind of communication, student talk, class talk. And the other side of the class talk, most teachers, they use instructions in Gujarati or Hindi or the local language under the, uh, what should I say, pretext that students don't understand. But imagine if you give this instruction 10 times in English, is it not likely that they will understand on their own? Why do we underestimate the capacity of our learners? I have taught students of standard of fire in a remote area, 25 kilometers away from my place almost no exposure to English, students, parents, most parents had never gone to school. In that classroom, I taught for 45 minutes without using a single word of Gujarati. And can you imagine what students said to their principal after the class? They wanted me to be their teacher. So I think we have to give more respect to our students' capacity to learn. Another is motivation. Luckily, in private sector, they get students who are highly motivated. They have a clear-cut goal. They want to achieve a particular level of English. They want to acquire a particular level of bands in IELTS or TOEFL like that. So they are highly motivated. A big problem. I'm sure many of you will agree with me that sometimes you want to carry on certain activity, activities, but because it is not assessed, for example, Gujarat speaking part. Yeah. Like spoken part, it's never tested. So it's so difficult for teachers to teach. Whereas we are lucky that speaking skill is tested in IELTS on total kind of exam. So we have to teach and students enjoy learning. And the last thing I would uh, say, because I have been given a warning, like terms like linguistic imperialism, linguistic discrimination, linguistic nationalism, linguistic dominance, and language imperialism, these are some of the terms I have heard in the last two days. They don't matter outside for real uh, candidates. So uh, there is a kind of disconnect, I feel, between versions later. Thank you. Thank you very much.